how this nano medicine concept come up you know it is so let's a little bit see what is the nanotechnology so next couple of minutes you know i will basically you know not going through my research i will give a basic concept what is nanotechnology how how nano medicine concept came up and what are the by today what are the products available in the in the market at the, at the and what are the products are in the clinical trials in the nano medicine products so nanotechnology and enabling technology that will change the nature of almost every human made object in the next century it was in nni in 2002 in uh, from us the quote came and uh, with this you know a lot of money spent by nih to to increase the uh, budget you know for for nanotechnology research to develop some products either in human healthcare or maybe some 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 different discipline so you see this is a cartoon i am going to show everywhere where i went so where we are okay so where we are we are in in the in the if you look we are in the 2000 to 2050 this is the era you know this is the timeline and more or less so if you look vacuum tube technology semiconductor technology already developed semiconductor technology your internet cell phone and all you know it already saturated so i am giving my example you know when when i did my phd in 99 there was no cell phone so and uh, we got, used to get 1800 as the fellowship whereas the incoming incoming charge per minute is 9 rupees i think outgoing is 13 or 14 rupees so it is impossible to buy a cell phone with us so uh, then when i went to japan for two years when i came back in 2001 you see i i saw maximum they have their cell phone with them so if you look you know the 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 uh, the product or the use of this internet is gone up so in this way what we are expecting so maybe in next couple of years now not every every day you know you when you wake up and you know when you want to go sleep so by this the 10 to 12 hours you know you have to use this nanotechnology product in in in, in, in every aspects so so the next next question is how it came up you know so this is a very nice slide you know this is professor uh, you know richard fenman so again he gave a lecture in caltech california institute of technology in 1959 where he gave this quote you know so the idea was and concept behind nano science and nano technology started by a physicist uh, this is uh, 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 professor uh, richard fenman so what what is the concept concept is you know bottom top approach so if you are making small small particle with a bulk particle you know bulk bulk things will give some properties and if when you want to make it in some small particles that again also will give some some different properties that is the that is the concept you know and he got the nobel prize in 1965 second you know this is professor norio toniguchi in 1974 he gave the first you know torp use nanotechnology so uh, then you know it took a lot of time next i think professor eric yeah uh, dr k eric you know he gave this the concept by writing couple of books one book is engines of creation the coming era of nanotechnology the other book you know so then in, in 1980 i think so 80 then in, by 86 you know the popular of popularism of this nanotechnology concepts come up so in a graphical mode if you look this is again you know yeah so moral yes so you see uh, again i have given 86 this is a pro professor eric then some of the products come up and after 2000 you know if you look this nanotechnology nano medicine things come up after after 2000 these are the some of the products i can give the example you know so this is magnetic nanoparticles this is fast fullerenes functional gold nanoparticles lipos lipos dioxide rubicin it is a landmark you know the duxin but 
is used for, for some, so this is a Dutch Rubicin formulation of uh, uh, liposomal formulation. I have a slide I can show you. So these are the, again, the products come up, you know, and this is, the, this is just a uh, 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 lining, you know, showing what are the products in, in which year. And more or less, this is again, these are the products. So what I can little bit tell to you, you know, this nanotechnology products are just like you are using the cars. So when you are using a car, you know, the car is from different companies. So here also, if you look, this nanotechnology vehicles, what we called, you know, these are the couple of things, you know. So if you, if you can, you can tell this is a particular system, nanoparticles, liposomes, dendrimers, uh, missiles, then gold nanoparticles, magnetic nanoparticles, then no doubt, you know, these days also this protein based nanoparticles are coming up. So now the question again, what is nanomedicine? So nanomedicine is basically, you know, when you use this, what I have shown in the last couple of slides, you know, this, that, that was the basically the nanotechnology. So when nanotechnology is used for human health care, then we call this, this term we use for nanomedicine and maybe when, when we are calling this is a human health care, so there are two things is coming off. One we call this is diagnostics and the other one is called, we call this is therapy. So basically nowadays we are called, we are calling this nanotheranostics. So nanotechnology in the use of therapy and diagnostics. So more or less, you know, when, when a patient is coming to you, you are telling do a MRI, do a CT, whatever, you know. So once you diagnose, then you are going, you are writing the prescription for medicines. So that, that's why not only for therapy, this nanotechnology product, again also we are using for, for, for diagnostics, at the same time we are using for, uh, for, for therapeutic purpose. So that's why I put two things, one is diagnostics, one is therapeutics. Diagnostics again we can go for imaging and identification and when we are calling thera therapeutics, so it is a uh, delivery system, so either it can kill the cells, it can kill the bacteria or it can kill the viruses. Again, you know, I'm just uh, showing a cartoon from, from, from the, from the my, my Google, you know, so now something is coming up, you know, so you can uh, this is image guided surgical suit, you know, before, before surgery, you can, you can, you can think of where it is by using different new, new technologies coming up, you know, then you can do the you know, surgery and post surgery also, you can look where it is. So more or less, uh, we scientists sometimes call this is a personal medicine or personal, so personal medicine. So we can, we can, we can uh, monitor throughout your treatment regime, you know, what, what is the progression, how it is coming up, and what is the recovery, and how, how things are moving in your, in your system. If you look, so these are the some couple of uh, nanomaterials agents, you know, in the, in, the, in the market recently. So there are some others, you know, I am not going back, but these are the some things in the, in the, in the recent market, is FDA approved. So if you leave this diagnostics, now the question is therapeutics. So I'm just showing a cut on how this cancer tumor, tumor vasculation and uh, we are looking for this. You see this is a highly angio, angiogenesis and also the other things are working on that. Hypoxia, tumor microenvironment, these are the and all, there are many, many things is happening in, in, that, in, the, in the inside the tumor. So now the question is we want to apply our nanotechnology. How, how to how to regress this tumor in a better way. So initially what happens? The, till today also I think, you know, you agree with me, when you are, when a patient is coming to the hospital, there are three options. Either you will go for a surgery, or you will go for a radiation, or you will go for a chemotherapy regime. So maybe sometimes it depends upon individual, or maybe in a combinational of one or two, or two, two, two plus one, three, whatever. So it depends how you diagnose, where, which stage it is. I am not going again in details. I think you must know there are four stages. Either it is in the stage one, two, or maybe sometimes you go for a radiation, reduce these things, then you go for a chemo, or sometimes you are giving chemo, reduce the size, then you do the surgery. 
So now the question again is, no doubt, so one person I am taking it, surgery, radiation, I, I, am, I, I left over now. Now the question is, once you are going for a therapeutics regime, you know that means your chemotherapy drugs. So what happens? What are the problems? So again I can say 98%, above 90% of the anti-cancer drugs, no doubt these days some, some of the drugs are available, these platinum based, platinum based drugs are water soluble. Otherwise, if you look traditional, the drugs which works in better, paclitaxel, doxorubicin, adramycin, the continuous series, you know, it is insoluble in water. So when it is insoluble in water, then it, there are different ways you have to arrange drugs. So either you can go for, like for paclitaxel, we are using a combination of castor oil and uh, absolutely alcohol, ethanol. So then the question again is when you are using a some, some other things for, 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 for solubilization of these drugs. So then, then the, that, that, that uh, adjuvants, we, you can tell this is adjuvant, you know, that, that has some negative effects. So then you have to look for cardiotoxicity, many, many, many things, you know. So that's why you, doctor is ready to give you a paclitaxel. He knows, you know, if you will give you a high dose of paclitaxel, it will be okay. But the question again is, so due to these adjuvants, what we used, to, to make it, you know, so then, then maybe your cardiotoxicity, other thing, other parameters is not suitable, then he is unable to give the best drug. So that's why, what we are looking for, the first aim is, can I have a water soluble formulation? That's it. So what we can do, develop a particular system, which is highly water soluble, then you can go for intravenous injection. Second, when I am talking, you know, developing a water based formulation, so it is a, we call this is a first generation drug delivery. So now the question is, so if the drug is, if, if you have a cancer on the breast, so if, can, I, can, can I target the drug to the desired site? So we call this is a target, targeted drug delivery. So again we call this is the second generation. So now the question is, so with this particular system, so if I want, where I want, I can, I can target. So I have, uh, you know, due to the uh, lung research, uh, publications and all, we know what are the biomarkers, highly expressed. So then, then we can we can conjugate the biomarker, you know, the antidote. We can conjugate on the surface of this particular system. Then we can give a intravenous injection. So what will happen? This, 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 your, uh, you know, targeting moiety can, can recognize by only, only that, that cancer cells. So there is a high, uh, you know, internalization. We call this a receptor mediated endocytosis. That's why, you know, the drug uptake will be more. So this is the slide, you know. So we call this is a first generation is passive targeting and second generation when you use the targeting moiety on the surface to, 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 to have a targeting, you know, where you want. So we call this is a targeting, uh, active targeting. And the second thing is stimuli targeting, you know. So by pH or by, by increasing the temperature, we can, we, can, we can increase the, you know, the pore size the drug can release. So again also you see this is, this is the, uh, basically this is one of the nanoparticle, you know, surface size, shape, material, so this all works, you know, how, how you can, how you can design and all. And for left, left side I have shown some of the dendritic or protein drug, carbon nanotif, then, then uh, your metal particles, polymer particles, polymeric missiles and all. This again, we have published a review article where I have shown. Again, this is this is the, how these delivery vehicles look up. So if you look again, you know, so these are the only drugs approved by FDA for, for this, you know, for, for cancer uh, therapeutics. So two examples I can see, I can tell you. One is uratoxin, which everyone knows in 95. You know, this is the doxorubicin. Uh, uh, Best uh, liposomes, at, uh, the stealth liposomes having a circulation time is very high, and I use for for many of the cancers. And and second thing also you must know this is abraxin, so available in the market in India also. So this is a albumin based paclitaxel formulation. So albumin is your surface coating nanoparticle where your uh, you have entrapped paclitaxels. And I, I think in 2005 it was FDA approved and used 
in the image. The concept again you, you see it these days, again coming up, I think you must heard this word nano robotics. So, it must, it has a high impact. So, everyone is expecting maybe next couple of years, we should have a nano robotics in, in, in surgery, in, in, in every aspect. So, it can clean your artery, it can use the, the best, best thing is, you know, so what will happen, you know, it will, it will precisely, it can help very much precisely it, it can help where you want to do the results. So, that couple of slides, you know, I have this, yeah, you see, this is a very nicely used. So, you can clean your blockage of your artery and more or less, this is a cellular surgeons and all, you know, everyone is expecting it will give you a very high impact. So, in, 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 in the medical field, this is nano robotics. So, again, thank you for your effort, so stay safe and healthy.